Hi there and welcome to the 18th row in the Get Fit by Rowing series. Now today's workout is for those people who love a maximum effort workout. One of the ones where you put everything into the machine and you're absolutely done by the end. So if you want to start warming up now before we get into our main warm up while I describe the session, please do just get in and start doing some light rowing. Now what we're doing today is we're going to do five one minute intervals, then four 45 second intervals and three 30 second intervals, all followed by the same amount of rest if that makes sense and you're going to do each of these intervals at a maximum intensity now i want you to hold your stroke rate between 30 and 32 so you're in control i don't want you just whizzing up and down and just going oh um, so it has to be controlled but i want you to really put it up there so what do i mean by maximum intensity well from an f out of 10 point of view obviously we mean 10 out of 10 from a heart rate training point of view well in these intervals you should be getting up into zone five it'll take you a while to drift in there that's just how the work the heart works but you will get into zone five if you're putting in the right amount of effort and then if you prefer to row with a 2k training pace point of view i want you to go 2k minus five or faster and that's important or faster is really important if you start these off and you're like actually 2k minus five isn't that tough you need to go faster okay this is the kind of session that if you hide from if you back off from if you don't go absolute max on you're not going to get the training benefits out of it okay it's too short it's only 18 and a half minutes worth of total workout today including rests and if you just ease your way through it you're just going to miss the point of the workout okay as such when it comes to the main uh, session if you want to set your monitor to 18 and a half minutes rather than worrying about all the intervals please do that will keep you in time with me on the video because that's what i'm doing all right so we need to get into our five minute warm-up before we get anywhere near today's session and before we can even do that we have to set up our machine which on a concept two that means heading straight to the drag factor and setting that to where you want it to be if you don't know where you want it to be set it between four and five and then watch the video i have on this channel about drag factor next up if you can set your monitor to eye heights so you're not having to look up and not having to look down and finally get to those foot stretchers and set them to a height where you're able to come into the front of the machine comfortably with your shins in a vertical position okay if you're set too high you can get a little bit tough to get there if you're set too low you can get there a bit too easy and i've just realized i've still got them set to one hole showing after doing this yesterday's row in shoes so there we go two holes showing when i'm in socks so always make sure and adjust so five minute warm up we're going to start this at that kind of pace as though you were just standing up holding a couple of bags of shopping and then we'll increase the pace as we go through the five minutes for those that have been warming up get ready to get into a proper warm-up in three two one let's go oh, right so like i say the power you're putting in here is just like you're coming out of a squat you're just holding a couple of bags of shopping or a couple of 10 kilogram dumbbells or something so you're not this isn't about rowing fast yet okay we'll increase pace as we go through this warm-up to make sure that you are warm enough for today's main session but this first minute just make sure your body is moving okay and that means that hinge over your hips with your back so from that 11 o'clock at the back so one o'clock tilt at the front think about that hinge and then arms out nice and straight with that forwards tilt and a good posture only sliding forwards until shins are vertical and then push with the legs two more strokes and then we'll add a little bit more power not much but really pace wise i want you to get into where we've been doing those low intensity sessions so run about 2k plus 20 if you have a 2k training pace heart rate well you'll still be drifting up so you're not going to get between that 60 and 70 percent here but you certainly don't want to be over 70 percent of your max heart rate in this warm-up yet maybe towards the end you might nudge it but not right now just a little bit more power that's all it is and then we will take five more strokes and then we're going to hold the same stroke rate 20 strokes a minute and just push even harder with our legs and think power first okay so one more and then just push a little harder you're tilted still and towards 
the front of the machine with straight arms but pushing harder makes you go about five seconds faster and let's back off the pace for 15 seconds then we're gonna do the same again and see if you can go a tiny bit faster still at the same stroke rate okay you ready so push it's only five strokes just push get that power in think about the connection timing between your push and your hands okay so ease off pace and now we're going to use that push to do a faster stroke rate so two more strokes one more and then push harder but go up to 24 strokes a minute so it's not a huge increase I want you to push get that power in okay ease off and then we'll do the same again except I want you to increase stroke rate and power this time okay all right here we go so think about that timing push with the feet at the same time your hands connect to your machine last one let's ease off and now we're gonna take the stroke rate up to close to 30 as you can get okay one more okay so good push with the legs so you have a much faster drive speed remember it helps to get that handle away smoothly last one and then of course the next one is going to be power and 30 strokes a minute you ready here we go so really try and lay in some power here up at 30 strokes a minute one more and ease off don't be too worried if in that last burst you weren't close to the pace you're aiming for in today's session it's fine Whew. right we're done with the warm-up your pace will come don't worry about it right so have a quick drink and then carry on doing some light rowing while I describe one more time what it is we're doing today okay make sure and keep your eye on the counter at the top of the screen if you're carrying on doing some light rowing just to give yourself enough time to stop and have a quick drink before we start today's main session which is five one minute intervals followed by four 45 second intervals followed by three 30 second intervals and each time you get the same amount as a rest so you do one minute one minute rest 45 seconds 45 seconds rest 30 seconds 30 seconds rest and each of these intervals are going to be up at your max intensity but at a controlled stroke rate so between 30 and 32 strokes a minute if you can get that high um, and putting in as much effort as you can so that's 10 out of 10 power 2k minus 5 or faster and your heart rate will be up at zone 5 by the end of each of these intervals hopefully okay remember heart rate drift might make it look as though you're not working hard enough because it doesn't quite get up there in time but trust me if you put in the effort you will be and that's it so i've set my monitor to 18 and a half minutes and i'll try and do the maths as we go down this hopefully i'm not going to have too much of a brain fog and i'll keep track but apologies if i <laughs> i'll try not to mess up have a quick drink if you haven't already and remember we're kicking off one minute max intensity but then one minute rest after we're doing that five times before we move on okay are you ready i hope so because i sure am all right then here we go in three two one go that's only a minute i know it sounds like a lot that i'm asking but it's only a minute even at this stage if you count down 30 strokes i might make it easier mentally I'm down at 140 pace which at the warm-up 
at this rate and power I was only at 145 so that's what I mean about you don't need to worry about pace from the warm up ok 15 seconds keep that power coming from the legs 3 2 1 there we go Whew. now I'm in that weird zone where now the heart rate monitor is working <laughs> my watch thinks I was at 81 beats a minute then my my zone's catching up I think I still think it's 108 no way it was that easy oh it's going up now maybe try adjusting it 30 seconds to go this my zone switch is great but on the arm upper arm it's not right for rowing I was just too lazy to attach it to the chest strap today 10 seconds to go then we're going to do exactly the same again 4 3 2 1 go same thing again one minute up at that pace you were just rowing at or faster remember it's all about leg drive at the front your arms your hands are just bracing hanging off the handle you're not pulling until you get to the back of the stroke here five four three two one Ooh. what's happened to you sorry oh well better readings at least 135 I had me at but I don't know how often the PM5 pulls the heart rate to update it's oh, 137 now so it's still drifting up either because of the data my switch is sending to the monitor or maybe it's just an afterburn from the effort 15 seconds let me do it again two down three to go six five four three two one go <sighs> I think I've got my drag factor a tiny bit too high today I think it's shifted when I moved it in from outside because I do feel like I'm having to kind of heave against it slightly at the front so I'll knock it down in the next rest oh, my heart rate monitor is now slipping 3 2 it's a bit of a damning review for the switch that so far it's not been accurate and it slipped down my arm but I know that's at least the second part there is because I'm not being 
putting it on tight enough. <sighs> Too worried about cutting off circulation to my arm. I wasn't doing it tight enough. Uh, how many is that? Three? How far have we gone? I'm gonna say three. Okay, seven seconds to the next one. Four, three, two, one, go. So I did, I nudged the drag factor lever down, walking it by about a centimeter. And the difference in feel now, in that I now feel as though I'm properly hanging off the handle. Oops. You can tell because I just fell off the seat. Whereas previously I was kind of having to tug a little. Three, two, one. Right, let's do the maths. Make sure I'm not doing an extra one. We're at 18, 17. Rest until 16 and a half. Rest until 14 and a half. Rest until 12 and a half. Rest until 10 and a half. I think that's right. Unfortunately, that's the downside to setting this to 18 and a half minutes without splits. Apologies if we're going to end up doing one too many. Hopefully you know, and you're sitting there going, ah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, 10 seconds until our last one minute. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. So, again, if you are rowing at 30 strokes a minute along with me. You can just count down your strokes. So there's 15 to go. I think not a good day for maths. Keep your pace in the right area. I'm now at 139. Three more. Three, two, one. Oh. Right, so still a minute rest, but then, yeah, 91% of max heart rate just then. Whew. Um, so we get a minute rest, but next is only 45 seconds. So this is where it's a bit favorable in a ratio point of view. But then we're down to 45 second rest. All right, 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go. It's the same thing. Get that pace to where it was. Or faster. Okay? Because they're only 45 second bursts this time. So 
So I'm 138. Yeah. Almost there. Five seconds. Last stroke. Yeah. And the only reason oh, I'm telling you my pace is for you to quantify your own pace. So I'm in and around, if not a little bit faster than I was for the one minute. And that's all you have to care about. Don't worry about being faster or slower than me. Just be what you are. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Second one. Now this is only 20. No, oh, is it? No. It's, what's four into, it's like 22 strokes maybe. 21, 22 maybe. For the 45 seconds. So keep them strong. I'm 137 now. One more. Still 90% max. And again, I'm just telling you my pace, so you know. Because that interval, or these intervals are shorter, you can put more of your bowl of power into each interval. Okay, less than 10 seconds. Six, four, three, two, one. Go. So our third one of the 45s. And this is really up to you about whether you want to increase your pace by loads or not. Or just eke it out little by little. 135 for me. One more. Ah. 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 Make sure to drink. Apologies, I need to get my breath back. Whew. All right, 15 seconds to go for our last 45. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Four, come on. It's our fourth. Whew. That first stroke for me then was rather weak. <laughs> That's okay. I'm back up at 136. My stroke rate is hovering. 31, 32, that's okay. Okay, two more, one more. So, 45 rest in this one. 
and then we're down to 30 second efforts. Oh, my speech pattern is back to motivational poster again. Single words. All right, seven, five, four, three, two, one, go. Remember, these are just 30 second efforts. So get that power in there. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, this 30 second rest won't feel like much of a rest. That's why I've only got one foot out. 15 seconds. 10. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. So this is where your VO2 max end of your fitness is built by keeping the power, the pace up. Two, one, last rest. Even in the face uh, of being exhausted, you need to keep it strong. 10 seconds, six, Four, three, two, one. Give it everything that you have controlled, but high rate, high power. One, 30, 37 strokes. 129, two more. Oh. Now, if ever you want an example of how things can fall apart technique wise, as you search for an extra second or two, rewind and watch that last 30 seconds. However, I'm happy. It was only the last 30 seconds, which on a rowing machine, I said before, if rowing upside down would help me get an extra one or two seconds, I do that for the last closing few seconds of your race or time trial. It's where basically pace becomes more important than technique for those last uh, 10 to 15 strokes. Because unless you're really nasty, you're unlikely to injure yourself. And it may be that that's the only way you can increase. Right, hopefully you've recovered enough. Have a quick drink if you haven't already. And what we're gonna do is one minute worth of light rowing, and then we're gonna do the drills that we normally do. You don't have to do the drills, of course, but I will. Okay, in three, two, one, let's cool down. So, right about 20 strokes a minute at 
just a little kind of in between your first minute of the warm up and the second minute you're not taking it really easy but you're also not taking it with any particular force that may cause your heart rate to climb back up again so if anything actually I'd rather you were now at that pace that kind of standing up holding two shopping bags pace 2k plus 30 maybe if you have a 2k training pace but make sure and still connect in all the right places okay two more strokes and I'm gonna put one foot on the ground and continue rowing this just helps open up my hips and the flexibility through my hip flexors and my lower back but it also helps just back off the intensity even more after all this is a cool down we're not meaning to work here swap feet continue much easier in socks doing that <laughs> keep your arms straight still you want to be rowing normally just you've only got one leg in so keep those arms straight at the front only pull them in at the back of the stroke one more and then we'll put both feet back in legs nice and straight and then row with your back and arms so swing over your hips pull in your arms out with your arms and then rock forwards over your hips again now I know I have a bit of a knee bend when I do this but that's just I don't know to soften my knees or something but I'm not pushing with my legs here at all okay let's roll into the front arms straight forwards tilt and just use your legs hold that forwards tilt and arms straight and see how long you can push your legs holding that position and then also think about that timing between your feet pressing into the foot plates and the feeling of you connecting the handle to the machine one more right so like I said it was hopefully clear just how much that put me through the ringer in that workout if you weren't anywhere near putting, putting it through so I was up at I think 95% of max heart rate uh, I'll have to check the data afterwards because it wasn't showing up properly but at one point I did see 95 uh, so and you can see from how much how hard it was for me to speak and whatever uh, that I really went through that if you didn't put in that kind of intensity then either do a 20 minute long slow row to get another kind of decent workout or do all of that again okay and this time do it harder and faster <laughs> or come back and do it again tomorrow because if you didn't put in enough if you didn't empty your bowl uh, today then come back tomorrow and empty your bowl because that's what this is about this is how your VO2 max improves is by emptying your bowl your body then goes hang on they emptied their bowl of power in that row I have to be more efficient about how I then let that power out next time how I use it and that's what this does is it you may still have the same amount but your body's learning how to use it more efficiently anyway sorry we're normally stretching by now my apologies so if you haven't already started stretching um, then uh, stretchy John is up there he's going to take you through some stretches if you don't have time please at least stretch your quads your glutes and your hamstrings but not in the shower because I don't want you to fall over or if you've only got space on the machine I'll take you through some stretches on the machine so put your legs back in the straps nice and straight good posture hands in the air fold forwards and it really is a hinging fold okay you're just you're like you're bringing your chest down to your legs you're not kind of you're not curling and collapsing down you are very much like a snapping hinge okay and then that should give you that nice stretch in your hamstrings and remember you can rest your hands on your ankles or on your feet but don't pull yourself forwards and after 15 seconds or so if you want to 
walk your fingers up your feet or something to just, just increase that stretch a little bit, then that can really help. Because you can sometimes just hit like a stasis point for your stretching, where it's like, oh, that feels like a stretch, but you're not really giving it enough of a stretch. So that little walk forwards can help. Let's do glutes next. So one leg up on the rail, bring your other foot over so that your heel is in the crook of your knee. You have a, and then bring your knee across um, into your body so that you have a straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. Hold that knee in place with one arm and then rotate round. And I like to hold on to the back of the machine for stability, but also to give me a focal point for that rotation round. So now I am looking perpendicular, Ooh, off sideways from the machine. Uh, but my, my kind of lower body is still in the right direction of the machine. And that then gives me a nice wee stretch down here in my glute. But my other one's feeling a bit left out, so let's swap round and do the other one. You can see the back of my head. Am I going bald yet? Let me know. Uh, yes. So that's how we get our glutes done. And it is important to get your glutes done, especially on a row like today, where if you're doing it right, you can that really get the power and then hanging off the handle. It's like doing deadlifts over and over and over again, uh, like full whack deadlifts. And that just gets right into your glutes. So it's important to give them a stretch. And your wee piriformis might get involved there too as well. Okay, quads next. I rest one hand on the monitor so I don't fall over. Flick my opposing leg up behind me and then pull it up against my backside and then I'll try and not fall over. <laughs> now I hold on to the upper part of my foot, the big bony uh, bridge, would you call it? Is that what it is? Um, oh, no, nope, it falls over. <laughs> um, rather than my toes, because if you hold on to your toes, that then stretches the tendons and your feet and your toes. You don't want that, because that could be sore. I know there's a little bit of a stretch that can go on there. You can point your toes back if you want to have a little bit of a stretch, but you really don't want to be grabbing onto your toes and pulling them back. You wee delicate little pinky toes, right? Swap feet. Uh, can I? Oh. Um, still, so after I had a rant a couple of days ago, <laughs> a rant, I was talking about uh, trying to find programs on the internet like how you can, how you see people selling your training programs. Hey, this is how to, I, I do get a lot of the um, uh, fit at 40 ones. Hey, you don't, you can still be fit and get a six pack at 40 and whatever, I'm like, oh, whatever. And usually it's like a, it's not, the photo they use is not of a 40 year old or it's like there's one that's like a, a drawing of someone and you're like, what, what's the point of that? Anyway, um, let's move on to our hip flexors. Um, one knee on the ground behind you with a foot behind you. Your uh, other foot is in front of you with a knee above it, so it didn't make much sense. 90 degree angle on both legs. Have a good posture. Tense that glute that's on the ground, that has the, has the knee on the ground, I mean. Uh, and tense your stomach muscles and just lean back very slightly. And you'll get a nice stretch down your hip flexors. Yeah, and I, I'm still looking around trying to find like the ultimate stretching package that I can find, like one that is that isn't just there to make somebody money. Do you, do you understand what I mean with this? That there's a lot of programs out there that are just basically cookie cutter programs that people are just churning out. I mean, you, I get adverts from people saying, um, uh, like to my email saying, hey, don't worry about programming your own workouts. We have a bank of 5,000 that you can just repackage as your own and sell on. Now, obviously I don't because I don't sell anything, but that's, the, that's the, pr the problem is that loads of the programs you see out there for like strength training and whatever. I'm not talking about rowing ones. Um, I swap legs, do exactly the same thing again. Um, yeah, a lot of the strength and conditioning programs that you see out there are basically just all taken from this, this one repository. I mean, yes, there's loads, loads of ones out there that people are doing themselves. I'm not saying they all are, but um, unless you get a recommendation from somebody or you know the person and whatever, then I kind of take these ones that just suddenly end up in your Facebook feed or whatever with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Like, it's fair enough, the High Rocks community that I'm part of, there's loads of trainers and coaches on there that are saying, hey, come and do my program or whatever. And they have proper results. Um, and so you kind of think, okay, fine, I, I trust you. You've, you've, you've got a podium place, I trust you. But when you just see this thing saying, hey, hyperbolic stretching or whatever, and you have no idea who that person is and whatever, you think, hmm, I'm not too sure. Man, especially when it's like a subscription and, and things, I just think, I don't know. I just think, I mean, even, let's move on to our forearms. Okay, then I'll continue this thought. <laughs> Hands in front of your face, uh, push them together and then bring them down in front of your body. Okay, so you have, so you've got a nice stretch into your wrists and forearms. Um, even, and I, I realize the irony of me saying this because obviously I'm putting out plans like this 
for anyone to do and I have no idea what your fitness level and the things are but the whole I mean I have no option I mean, unless I start charging people um, individual uh, times for, for writing a training plan for you this is the kind of cookie cutter idea of me just putting out a plan it's kind of all that I have as an option which is why this heart rate based one is actually perfect because it is very tailored to you even the 2k training plan 2k pace ones can, can vary a bit too much um, so yeah so what I'm saying is if you're going to pay someone for a plan, right, this is ultimately what I'm trying to get at, right, let's do our shoulders next, say, so, oh, Chepity, what's he about to say, hands out in front of you, bring that hand uh, across your body, use your other arm to, to like loop over it, to hold that arm against your body, and then you'll get a nice stretch into your delts, up into your shoulders. If you don't know what I'm doing, podcast people, please check out the video, this is a hard one to describe. Um, yeah, if you're going to pay for a training plan, Make sure it's tailored to you, okay? Even, I mean, I've been, there's a couple of trainers that I got in touch with uh, to say, hey, I'm a rower, but I'm looking to do some strength and conditioning. Can you design me a plan that's based around the time I spend on the rowing machine, but I also uh, want to do some weights at night? And they're like, yeah, hey, yeah, I'll make sure to do that. And then what you get sent is basically just their exact same plan that they send out to any, anybody, because there's, you go, well, where am I supposed to fit a row in this? Um, and they're like, ah, oh. so, all I'm saying is if you're going to fork out money and actually pay somebody, remember, I do all this for free. This is my massive caveat, swap arms. Um, my massive caveat here is that I'm giving it to you free access for what I'm doing because you know it's not tailored to you, okay? And then all the other comes, things that come off there is that, therefore, it's up to you to make sure that you're healthy enough to do a plan like this in a session like today, okay? It's, it's, this is kind of the deal that we make with each, with each other. I'm not charging for this. So. But if you are gonna start paying somebody, make sure it's tailored to you, okay? Because there's no point otherwise, okay? The, 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 yes, there are proven plans that work for loads of people, like the PEAT plan for, for rowing, for example, it's proven to work for people, but again, it's free. <laughs> and the back end of that is there's no support to it. There's no, like, there's nobody to, to ask questions of. Um, and so make sure if you're paying for something. So anyway, what I'm saying is I'm still trying to find a stretching thing that is that I can say to someone, right, here's my problems. Overall, my flexibility is rubbish, but my problems are, can you write me a plan? And then get something from them. Hands behind you, uh, so your ski jumper, rotate your thumbs outwards and that will give you a nice stretch into your biceps. Because um, it's like Tom Morrison, who's really well known for his mobility stuff. Um, I've not actually got in touch with him to actually personally ask yet, but he's definitely the, the, the person I'm going to say that I'll get in touch with and say, right, this is my problems. What, what would it be to get a bespoke plan from you? Um, and there's like, uh, there's a really, really well-known rowing coach um, uh, called Eddie Fletcher, who he sells standard plans, I think, on his website, but you can then go to him um, and work one-on-one -on -one with him and he will write you a bespoke plan for you. And that's what you want in a coach. You want someone that's gonna work with you, not just say, here's what works for everybody. Again, I do that, but it's totally free because I don't talk to you. If you wanna, yeah, but yeah, I was about to say, if you wanna get in touch and we can work something out, but I don't have time for that. Hand up in the air and then it gets bored and it touches your spine. So your elbow's pointing up in the air. Use your other arm to just ease it up into the sky. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd love to, to actually offer that service to extend what I do and actually get into more of a personal one-on-one -on -one thing from a coaching point of view and I'll help people out. But really, um, and, and we'll, it's very much a chicken and egg thing here. My day job means I don't have time to do all that kind of stuff because um, I work long hours to making these TV programs. But the irony is that if enough people, if all, if all the people who watch these videos on YouTube then got in touch and said, hey, could you write me a bespoke plan? I'd then make enough money that I wouldn't have to do the day job. So <laughs> there was very much a, a, a flip. But also this goes back to, sorry, swap arms. This goes back to, I think, the reason that people come and watch and do my plans and whatever is because I give them away for free. The moment I start to charge, I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the gene pool with all the other guys and girls that are out there offering plans and I don't need to be, so. And actually, what I like is just giving people free access to this. There's nothing worse than when you find someone and you're like, hey, this is great. This is it's like if you get an app that you download and you go, hey, this is fantastic and it's doing what you want. And then that pop-up comes up saying, to continue, you'll, <laughs> you'll have to take a subscription. And then you're like, oh man. And so when you find someone on the internet that does something that you want and you're like, hey, great, great. And then you start watching and flicking through and doing sessions. And then it goes, boom, paywall, <laughs> you have to pay. So um, yeah, so I don't do that. The training plans and stuff will always, 
maybe in time I'll start to add things in that maybe you have to pay for some, I don't know. And there is already the Patreon and the PayPal thing for if you want to donate, which is kind of really as far as I get to. Um, but the actual, this, these roll-on workouts I put on YouTube will always, there will always be these free plans, okay? I'm never going to get into that stage. How on earth did we get there? How oh, we got there from my stretching? <laughs> so if, anyway, if you have any suggestions of anyone that I could go to just try and see about why I'm so stiff and, and whatever, and just to, I mean, I was thinking yoga, but again, I don't think yoga's what I need. So, right, there we go. Right, we're done. Sorry, bit of a rambly end again. Um, so that was our max intensity workout for this week. This is week five. Um, so there's only one more to go, okay? And you won't be surprised to hear it's going to be a little bit tougher than it was today um, because we've been progressing. If you look at what we've been doing over the past weeks, each one of these max intensity workouts has been tougher than the week before. You may disagree and say that last week's 10 times one minute was, was tougher than today, but actually I think today's was rougher um, because you got less like descending rests. But answers on a postcard. Make sure and leave me the hashtag uh, getfitwithrowalong if you're going to leave me a comment anywhere saying he said something at the end that was utter rubbish. <laughs> so I will see you in the next workout, which we're back to those low intensity workouts. And I really hope that if you're doing this series properly, when it comes time for these low intensity workouts, you're looking forward to them because after a session like this, you should be like, wow, I need to recover from that. But tomorrow I want to row. So I'm going to make sure it's a low intensity to prep me for the last one of the week, which will be back to that hard tempo workout. All right. So there is a design and plan to this trust me um, and as long as you put in the intensities you will get fitter and then at the back end of all this you can then say right what do I want to do next I want to train for a 5k I want to train for a 2k a 1k a 500 meter a marathon a half marathon and this get fit by rowing plan will have given you the foundation fitness for, um, to be able to do any of them okay all you have to do is just focus a little bit on what you want to do next and you'll be able to do them all right so there you go that's my little sign off so thank you so much for doing this one please like I said let me know how you got on with it use the get fit with row along hashtag um, which is the same on all of these rows and I will see you in the next video or one of my many 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 other videos I have on the YouTube channel until the next video row well be well bye bye